What's going on everyone? My name is Tenebris Infinite and welcome back to Generation Zero. So, safe to say, the latest update has the community divided on whether or not this was a good way to increase the difficulty. From whether or not Adventure Mode should be a place to play GZ casually, to those who think even this level of difficulty is not enough, those thrill seekers that are chasing that first initial fear of tanks stomping in the distance, to those that aren't willing to suffer the challenge, April's update has been controversial to say the least. So in this video and the next, I'm going to be going over the arguments for both sides. We'll discuss how an increased difficulty will actually benefit GZ moving forwards, and then on the other hand, we'll be talking about how this difficulty increase is harsh on many players, especially the newer ones. In this two-part video series, we'll see whether or not this difficulty spike was exactly what the game needed, or if it's something that needs to be rolled back and maybe reconsidered. The knee-jerk reaction to this difficulty spike is to be opposed to it, and I don't fault that at all. Difficulty spikes usually lead to feelings of being cheated out of an experience you enjoy, from either just the levity of a scenario you've gotten used to, to situations where out of literally nowhere you're being one-shot from a million miles away. But today, we'll talk about how moving forwards, this difficulty spike might just be what is needed for introducing new machines, increasing player levels, adding to skill levels, and even on a player-to-player -player basis, giving us the ability to make better decisions in GZ and take things much more methodically. Today, we'll be talking about raising the individual player's skill ceiling, We'll be talking about opportunities to add more difficult machines without a large skill gap. We'll be talking about how this will introduce the opportunity for us to vary up our strategies and implement stronger guerrilla play style. And then, finally, we'll be talking about how this potentially was the developer's true intention from the very beginning of Generation Zero's inception. Uh, there will be links to uh, the timestamps down in the comments below, so if you have uh, a keen interest in any of these topics, definitely check out those timestamps. So, first up to bat, raising the individual player's skill ceiling. Now, let's take a brief second to explain what a skill ceiling actually is. It's basically the amount of things you can handle at once, the ability to make decisions under pressure, and the ability to react to external pressures in the right way. Generation Zero's newest update definitely pushes that to a maximum degree. Now when you fight a machine, you really need to consider, do I have the supplies to last this fight? Or, which machine should I target first? Or even more on my own personal side, is one more tank worth the fight? With this being pushed to a maximum, it means that we genuinely have to think about these things before an encounter, and that is a plus in my books. From making the machine invasion much more believable, to adding a level of thought that we didn't have before in GZ, the way the skill stealing has been pushed in the past few updates really gets me excited personally as a gamer. Though I would definitely fall in the thrill seeker category of GZ players, still the opportunity to improve our skills against the machines absolutely gets me stoked for the future. If this is knuckled down on, then new machines would hold a different level of priority for us as the players instead of just being one more machine to send to the junkyard. This means that when new machines get added, we will have one more reason to prioritize them, all as long as the difficulty progression between machines stays at a similar constant of where it is right now. So right now, with the current runner, hunter, tank, harvester recognition of threat, having something new thrown into the mix actually feels very natural. Whereas with the previous difficulty, all of the machines kind of felt the same threat-wise. Class was what really defined the threat level, but now it's much more focused on what machine you are engaging alongside the class level threat, which will allow the team to get more out of less when it comes to adding individual new machines. 
On top of that, it's also breathed some brand new life into machines we had already experienced. All in all, improving the individual player's skill ceiling is only beneficial in the long run if we're to expect new machines to pose a visible improvement to the game when it comes to player engagement. On top of that, for the in-game character's skill ceiling, we can't expect ourselves to keep getting stronger, have more levels and skills, get all these fancy new weapons and farming locations, then have nothing to use them on. I think increasing the difficulty makes it easier to actually implement these much requested features without ruining the balance of the game in general and turning this into an incredibly easy game. If we want the bar raised on our end for what we can do, it's only logical that the same should happen for the machines. Now, secondly, let's talk about these hypothetical new machines, which we've been given reason to expect somewhere along the line due to the newest player survey by the team. Let's say it's something much more fearsome than a tank. If this was a severe depravity between the tank and this new machine, we would have a really difficult time coming to terms with this said new machine. It would become something we'd avoid in combat situations, and overall would potentially take away from the individual player experimenting with this new machine type. This would lessen the overall benefit of adding some new insane machine, like an air-based machine that carpet bombs an area, or a coastal machine that bombards the player within range, or an invisible machine that can kill you without you even seeing them. This current new difficulty really reprimands that issue because, as it is when it comes to the player's skill level, we'll be anticipating attacks from where we don't expect them with the new harvester and tank behavior, thus allowing us to individually adjust to this new machine threat with some level of competence. If a machine like those listed above were introduced without warning, we would be totally caught off guard with no skills to match the threat. In this case, the new machine difficulty adds a level of premonition we can reasonably anticipate. With the help of like-minded YouTubers like myself, we will have strats on strats to deal with these new threats, and based off of those strats, we will then be able to deal with machines of the above difficulty uh, in, in some sort of a reliable fashion, and everything in the future as well as the current machines get updated and improved. Now for the next segment, I'd like to refer to an opinion shared by a channel called Game Maker's Toolkit. And the saying goes, if given the opportunity, players will optimize the fun out of a game. And in a way, I'm a prime example of that. With my previous tank tactics, they were so optimized that they made tank fighting trivial in GZ, and to a degree removed some of the fun in regards to having an opponent that keeps you on your toes. With this new difficulty, gas attacks having a much larger radius, rocket salvos traveling much further distances and way more rapidly, and the tank's auto aim being cranked up to 11, all my tactics for dodging incoming fire and using spacing to influence the machines is basically out the window now. Which is not a bad thing at all. It's given a new spark of fear when I hear a tank stomping off in the distance, and even though those old strats are now outdated, it means now I can come up with new ones. Maybe ones that are a little bit less optimized, but more fun to do. But let's be real. I'll likely optimize the heck out of these new behaviors, and likely will be right back in the same situation once I do. But the glory of this is that now there is a further benefit to guerrilla playstyles, and it'll give me a huge chance to really crack into guerrilla combat and show how beneficial it can be to us. Uh, and then lastly, the final thing defending this difficulty spike is that this was the true intention of the developers all along. So let's refer back to the letter from the devs from back in May of last year. And the letter reads, Some players don't find the machines challenging enough, while some find them too hard. Over time, we'll continue to make improvements so that they live up to their deadly design intent. This area will see continuous improvement as we tweak the existing machines to get them feeling just right for all types of players. 
So this whole deadly by design factor to the machines has been present since the game's inception. They were never intended to be a cakewalk. And now they're anything but that. The machine invasion in Generation Zero was always intended to feel dire, like we're fighting against an overwhelming enemy. So it was only a matter of time until something like this happened, and in all honesty, I think it's great that the devs are returning to this original concept. Though a lot of people are not fans of this new difficulty, I always enjoyed the challenge of Generation Zero, the Dark Souls of first-person shooters. So I know we've covered a lot of ground here in the past 10 minutes, and with the next video we're likely going to do the same, but the idea of this is essentially if we want to have better things, have crazier weapons, have more levels, have more skills, then making the machine stronger is only logical to maintain the challenge and the status quo. Uh, then, alongside that, if we want new machines, there needs to be some further level of distinction between the machines in order to make implementing a new machine more beneficial overall to us. For the next part, uh, we were basically talking about how, uh, given the amount of time that I had taken and put into optimizing strats, uh, I had removed a small portion of fun out of this game by doing so. And then for the final point, uh, just essentially that this is the original design and intention from the developers in the first place. So let me know, what do you think of this new difficulty? If hearing about why this difficulty makes sense and is a good thing in its own way is not your opinion, then maybe sound off in the comments below about why. As I said at the beginning of this vid, uh, we'll be having a part two where I'll go over why this isn't a good thing in a video coming out very soon. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed and I will catch you dudes in the next one. Until then, peace.